Hey everybody, Paul Worth here with Builder Trend. You are tuned into Real Talk with Real Pros. I'm coming to you live from Builder Trend's headquarters, specifically the bar, uh, where I feel most comfortable. Uh, nobody's here, but um, we're hoping to get everybody back in the office very, very soon. Uh, thanks for tuning in. We're gonna let some people join before we bring on our guests. Uh, we're gonna be joined today by John from Deck South. Uh, John is a longtime client. He was actually recently featured on our podcast, The Building Code. Uh, so if you haven't yet, please check out our podcast. Just search for it wherever you listen, uh, The Building Code. John's ep episode and about 90 other episodes are a great way to uh, not only learn about Builder Trend, hear a little bit about our company, uh, our product, and like we're doing today, hear from some industry, uh, some industry people like John about their business and, and sort of their day to day. So that's it, Real Talk, Real Pros. Um, we've been doing this for about uh, four or five weeks now and um, it's gotten some great response. Really the point of this and the purpose of our show is to just bring on somebody like John, uh, a contractor uh, that is in their industry and we just wanna hear about him. I wanna hear about the business, hear about um, his expertise, you know, try to try to get in there and understand his business. So we're excited to bring John on. Uh, this is live right now, uh, obviously, um, on Instagram Live, but we are going to be posting this to our IGTV. So, uh, if you want, if you have to go, or if you just get bored of looking at me, which I can understand, um, just come check us out later on IGTV because we're going to record this. Um, thanks for everybody joining. A lot of people waving. Um, if you have questions, I'm going to bring John on in just a few minutes. If you have questions today, uh, there's going to be an area for you to drop those questions in, and I'll try to get all those. Uh, I'm going to try to see if I can walk and chew gum at the same time. So, uh, very, uh, very interested to see if that's going to happen. Okay, so we're going to bring John on right now and um, let's uh, meet him. Waiting for John to join. People are still joining here. There hey. he is. Hey, how are you, Paul? John, how you doing? I'm good. Good to see you again. Thanks. Good to see you. Yeah, I was just mentioning to the uh, the feed that we did our podcast back in May, uh, and it was one of the rare video podcasts we did, which was great. Has it been that long? Yeah, May. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, it was mid-pandemic, so we can definitely talk a little bit about uh, how things have progressed since then with you and, and your business, but thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it. Uh, let's kick it off. I mean, I think people really love to hear, um, not from us, but more from, from industry insiders like yourself, um, probably the best thing to do is set the table. Uh, Let's hear about your business, what you guys do, where you're at, where you're at. Yeah, you can hear me okay, Paul? Everything's good on my end. Cool. Uh, let us know in the, in the comments if you can't hear anybody. Yeah, I don't have my, I forgot my uh, AirPods. Uh, so Deck South, um, we are design build in the, in the back, backyard uh, arena. Um, this is our 21st year. Um, back in 98, started it uh, one deck at a time, you know, just uh, trying to Back then, a custom deck was uh, not like not like it is today. Um, over the years, we progressed and in, in, into all things backyard, um, from decks, porches, patios, pools, um, outdoor kitchens, um, overhead structures, things like that. Um, uh, loyal to the name, um, and um, just uh, you know what what we've tried to do is is bring a professional kind of approach to full blown design build into the backyard, which is, uh, at least in our area, a little bit, uh, a little bit different. Um, you know, a lot of guys are doing it inside for many, many years. Um, not too many people are doing it outside. You, you mean the design build aspect of it all? Yeah. Specifically, are you talking about how you present uh, the design and sort of come up with a concept together with the prospect? Is that what you mean? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. And then involving them, right? Uh, from right. The um, kind of making it a partnership where, you know, and certainly Builder Trend's been huge in that with the selections uh, page of, mm -hmm. uh, is it, you know, obviously with, with multiple versions of a design, um, we can build out that selections page to be real heavy and then they can pick and choose as we go through it. Um, so kind of working in tandem with Builder Trend on the, with the design has, has helped kind of get their involvement in the, uh, from the get go. So you guys put a premium on, premium on being pretty interactive during the sales process, making them feel a part of it. It's not, it's not a stock deck. It's a deck custom to them. Yeah, man. You know, honestly, yeah. I said it recently um, on a, I was 
in the backyard. And I, I, I kind of feel more like a consultant at times than a contractor. You know, there's like that marriage between uh, uh, kind of uh, grabbing their hand and taking them along that process and going, here's what I would suggest you do. Here's what we've seen over the last 21 years. Um, not going to force you into a certain um, uh, area, but but let's leave no stone unturned and kind of kind of look look at everything and and kind of hold their hand and guide them uh, along the way. Yeah, well, because your point, you know, the outdoor living space has changed over the last twenty years. You know, it used to just be a deck and a patio. Now it's just like a, a living space. So people sort of need that guidance. What what's out there? What's available? How should we do this? Right. 100% man it's you know the obviously living in, the, in Atlanta we've got um, full year enjoyment right um, mm -hmm. maybe other parts of North America that's not the, the, the case but with today's technology you know whether you're in your your zoom call on your porch or your zoom call in your in, in your basement office um, living outside is, is is a is a strong draw yeah, for sure. Working from home, having the opportunity to be out there for some of the meetings that we have is, is probably big. Because you mentioned that in May, you know, that that was, you know, 60 days into the pandemic and people were already asking for Zoom rooms in their outdoor living, right? Yeah, they were. Yeah. And it's it's been interesting. We've we've completed a few of them. And it's been fun. Really? Yeah. All right. All right. Have you thrown any, thrown any of those photos on your Instagram? Uh, no, we're waiting on beauty pictures, beauty shots. <laughs> there you go. All right. Go follow Deck South. It's at Deck South, right? Deck South. So go, go follow at Deck South. You guys have some great uh, pictures and videos there. And, and John promises to throw some Zoom room shots in there, right? Promise. <laughs> Do a deadline on you. All right, great. So Mar Marietta, Georgia, Atlanta area, been in business about 20 years. Yep. It's obviously not just you anymore. How many, how many team members do you have? So right now we're at 19, uh, which has fluctuated. We've, um, you know, over the years we've had as many as I think high 30s. And, and right now 19 feels like that. Uh, as, as many as we can handle. Uh, so. Right. And, and are you the sole owner then? Yes. So all 19 Head reports to you. Head janitor. Head janitor. <laughs> we could probably dive into that. Um, well, that's great. So, you know, as you progressed over the years hiring employees, was it a pretty natural progression or did you make a conscious decision at some point to sort of ramp things up? Because, you know, I, I guess why I asked it, I think, John, a lot of people in the life cycle of their construction business, right? You start, you just try to make your way, you know, get jobs that you can one deck at a time, like you said, which I think is a great slogan. Um, uh, then you sort of get to a place where you're making money, you're getting jobs. It seems like it's getting easier to get work. And I have to assume you probably make a decision at that point. You know, do I want to stay here or do I want to really take this thing to the next level? Absolutely. You know, I was, I was in a conversation earlier today with, uh, with a past client. We had had a sales call or design call. Uh, we built her mom a project on Lake Lanier seven years ago. Her mom happened to be in the sales call. She asked about a few of our employees. Is he still with you? Is he still with you? And oh, wow. I was reminded that uh, 20 years ago, I was building a deck in a neighborhood, and my truck was parked in the front yard. Sorry, uh, next door sure. was um, a crew uh, building a deck, and... Um, we started talking and because he had an FMF sticker on the back of his truck and I was riding motorcycles at the time and one thing led to another and, um, and, and that was kind of my first employee uh, bringing somebody in. Um, and so I'd like to say that there was a burning bush and there was a lot of thought into it, but it really wasn't. It was, uh, it, it was kind of like, oh man, I, I need some help and uh, you don't like where you're at and okay, come on board. And so that was kind of the start of it then. Now, um, moving past that, yeah, it's been more methodical, right? Um, thinking through, okay, do we need a, you know, um, what, what positions do we need to fill? Uh, how do we find those? Um, we did something recently, Paul, that was new to us. Um, we we kind of started looking at, uh, you've heard of DISC and Myers-Briggs and all those. We, yep. we one of those called Colby and yep. put everybody in the uh, Colby assessment, um, which uh, I think helped everyone uh, understand that, uh, uh, the guy they work for is not uh, just, um, they d didn't, it, it confirmed that, that I was crazy um, <laughs> from a professional level. I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense. So, uh, no, I mean, so I, I think, um, you know, there's a lot of ways to look, look at it. Uh, we've got a really tight group. And so we're trying to figure out how to work even better together. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I know a lot of guys out there um, 
you know, sub, sub things out and, and people come and go. And that's kind of hard for us because uh, we're, we're pretty, uh, we're kind of dialed in and, and, and specialized in, mm -hmm. in doing. So it's hard to have, have somebody here today and gone tomorrow. So today's um, uh, interview process is a lot longer and, and, and more, uh, have many more steps than it did 20 years ago. Right. Because you're trying to find a fit, right? It's important to find the right personality. You brought up a great point. You know, we, we've used those personality tests and those assessments for many, many years here. And not only does it help your, your team understand each other and, and their boss and you, but for you, you know, if you have an employee, a uh, great employee, you're going to look for the same things in, in the next interview, right? Yeah. And, you know, what's interesting about that is you can't really take those as like canonical, like, okay, it's this person is a one, two, three, four. So therefore they're going to fit. Right. I mean, there's, it's a, it's a base plate. It's a template. It's a, something to work with. Um, but it's not all encompassing like, okay, that's um, they are that number. So therefore they're going to fit. I, I would say though, that uh, what, what I realized over the years, just being really honest with you is that I'm not a very good uh, hirer. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I've been told by uh, several guys in the company that uh, I'm not no longer allowed to hire solely uh, because uh, I think sometimes as contractors, we, um, um, somebody said one time, are you a gambler? I said, man, of course, I'm a contractor. Of course, we're fixed, fixed price contractor. Everybody's a gambler, right? Sure. I mean, so uh, you, you look at it and you go, okay, well, um, this, this person can work. We can, um, I, I can work with them and, and they can get better at this, that, and the other. And, and you stop seeing what you're really looking at and, and you see what you think this person can be. So um, for me, it was a situation of I needed, I needed some help um, uh, because I was, I was hiring some guys that uh, I thought would work out and didn't. Uh, so that's, that's where it was going for me. So who, who does the hiring now? So you, you fired yourself from that job? I fired myself from that job. Now sure. I, I, I'm, I'm a part of it. Um, sure. But um, yeah, so Aaron, um, who oversees that, Tammy, and then Shane kind of gets involved there. And, and George is, is, is a big decision. So it's kind of a four prong approach there. And then uh, I get to, you know, show up and say hi kind of thing. So yeah, you get to write the check too. So yeah, that's fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, good. Well, let's shift gears here. So you guys, decks obviously, but you're outdoor living. What about that specific business do people not know about? I mean, is there something unique there? You know, we, we, I think we understand custom home builders and remodelers and there's challenges there and it's unique, but you know, what's unique about your business? It could be anything. Yeah, um, unique. Um, you know, I think I, I, what I've heard over and over again uh, that probably makes us unique is that we tend to, take on projects that um, are a little bit more challenging than, you know, not to say that other guys can't do it, but I think, I think some guys look at projects and go, I can do that, but I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. I'd rather go two or three that I can rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Right. And um, strength, weakness, whatever it is, I don't know, craziness. I, I tend to gravitate towards those that it's like, hey, that can't be done. And it's like, okay, well, let's go do that one. Yeah. That's for us. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm adamant on if, when you walk into a backyard, if you look at a project, I want to try my best to have a stamp on it where somebody could go, wow, this, this looks like uh, those guys over at Deck South did this, you know, and there'd be some unique features in there that, that would, that would, and you know, more than just cliche ish, like it's a Deck South project. But so um, I don't know, I think some, somewhere in there is, that's kind of an 80, 80, 20, right? I mean, 80% of your projects are, are what anyone would maybe possibly do. And then 20% yeah. of them are ones that uh, maybe guys would go, you know what, I don't want to touch that. I'd rather go do something else over here. So I, I think we, that's probably something that uh, we favor a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, on another podcast, we had uh, Lucas Lagoons and he, he said the exact same thing. He's like, you know, a lot, a lot for me as a business owner is the challenge that nobody else is going to take on. So yeah, you can see that, that thread through a lot of outdoor, outdoor living contractors, which is great. So we, we talked to you in May on the building code. And for those who just joined, that's our podcast from build a trend, check it out. The building code, John was on a, uh, a, a episode in May. You, we were just in the pandemic. You were talking a little bit about how some of those challenges. Um, since then, how things have been going? What's what's been some unique things that you've you've sort of met during the pandemic? Yeah, man. You know, it, it's been an interesting year uh, for for all of us, right? Yeah. Um, I think that um, 
in a lot of ways, it brought the nucleus of the company together a little closer. Um, it allowed us to communicate with our clients at a really high level. And with them being home, it was kind of hard not to communicate with them, right? Um, right. They weren't going anywhere. So, yeah. it, you know, um, uh, obviously the material side's a challenge and still still is a challenge, right? Um, th yeah. there, there's shortages throughout the industry. Um, I think for us, the big challenge, if there is one or was one and still, well, there is one and continues to be, it's, it's, it's tapering a little bit, is the inspection process. Because a lot of these inspectors, um, they, even in, in, in some areas, are still working out of their homes, not even yeah. going to the office, right? And now uh, a lot of it's online, but they're, um, they're not quite communicating like maybe they were pre-COVID, right? So yeah. that makes it a challenge because everything we do is permitted and everything we do has inspections. So mm -hmm. for us, what it's lent to is, Paul, is we, um, we've gone as much as we can to full-blown private inspectors. I didn't even know that was possible. So our Governor Kemp in the state of Georgia came out um, and made a decree that said, you can take from conception to completion on a single family dwelling, you can hire an engineering firm to do all of your inspections, uh, cradle to grave, if you will. Um, now, there are some jurisdictions that are pushing back a little bit going, hey, you still got to come get our approval. We're open. So we're kind of having to work in tandem with them. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, there's costs there, right? Um, but the good thing is you need a geotechnical footing inspection. You want it at 3 o'clock on Tuesday. You kind of get it at 3 o'clock on Tuesday because <laughs> you're right. paying. Right? You're not sitting around waiting. And so, you know, what's different for – and anybody that's building the, and outdoors can, can, can uh, relate to this. Um, you, you know, some of the guys that you have on, uh, like Matt Rinsinger and, and those guys, you know, as they're building homes – they're kind of in that home um, and it's that one location where inspectors can come and go. When we're in the backyard, you know, as the dominoes fall on inspections, one's got to happen before the next, so to speak. Mm -hmm. We're not necessarily just sitting in the backyard waiting. We kind of have to keep moving. Right. So we can't really go. There's not always something to work on in the backyard while we're waiting on that inspection where there might possibly be in the house, right. And the envelope in the house. So, um, a lot of these inspectors are wanting someone on site when they show up. So, um, you know, that lends itself to, to even more having the private inspectors, um, sure. because, especially for Atlanta. So we build in 17 different municipalities around Atlanta. Uh, you've got a city, you've got a county, you've got a city, you've got a county. So um, that means that 17 different styles of inspections. You'd like to think they're all the same, right? But, you know, they're... they're Not so they're, much. <laughs> so... Um, so, I mean, we could have, you know, 50 miles between projects. Um, so anyway, the, the, the private inspector, um, scenario has helped us. That's awesome. So that's a great tip. So obviously it varies by state and, and sort of your local municipality, but private inspectors. Yeah. I mean, look, there's a cost there, right? But at the end of the day, to your point, if you save you two jobs or four trips, you know, you're making that up, right? Well, and, and not to knock any inspectors out there that, that are working for a city or, or, or county, but most that I've met don't have an engineering degree, but right. yet engineering firms that we're hiring, they're sending out typically engineers to do that. So, you know, and then at that point, they're, they're, uh, they're kind of in it with us, right? They're stamping that report. They're, you know, so they're putting their, their rear end on the line as well as deck South, right? So. Yeah. That's great. That's a great tip. So. How, how's, how's business been in terms of volume? Um, and, and I guess if the sales are there, and that's what I've heard from a lot of companies, especially outdoor living, like the, the leads are up, the, the requests for estimates and quotes are up. Um, were you guys set up to handle that, that increase in volume? And has that put some pressure on you guys? Yeah, great question. So we're, we're up like 29% in sales, but we're only up uh, – about 14% in production, right? right? So that's, that's that, that's that, um, you know, so it, it couldn't, couldn't really throttle down and just, just pick up that whole 30% increase. Right. So um, without having manpower. So no, we're not. So what that does is obviously push our, our lead time back. Um, right. So, yeah. And, and so, you know, from the top of the funnel, you get more leads, you've got to, you know, qualify more people, you've got to crank out more estimates, 
you've got to figure out when you can get them scheduled, right? That's a lot of pressure. If you don't have a process down in the sales, sales and things. Yeah. There's this software program called builder trend that we use <laughs> pretty good. Yeah. I was showing up the softball there. I actually wasn't, but <laughs> I appreciate that. You like yeah, that? Yeah, no. Yeah. It, you know, I, I think people at the start of this pandemic were like, you know, how do we get jobs? What's my outlook? And those were fair, fair questions to ask. But since those lead intakes come up, I got to believe that if you don't have a good process down and a way to filter those leads and manage those, it's, it's put even more pressure on that side of things for you. Well, that's a, uh, that's a massive thing. I, I, I actually take it for granted some days that where we've come from, th there was a time when the phone would ring and I'm jumping in my truck. Right. Where are you at? Okay. I'm coming to you. Right. As today is the phone rings. Um, we set up, um, you know, thank you for calling. Then we set up a feasibility phone call with them that is in a second, a second phone call. So we've touched them twice by the time that feasibility phone call happens. And then from there, we set up a on-site visit if they um, have signed our design agreement. So we actually, you know, do a design for all of our proposals that's, that has a cost associated to it. Um, mm -hmm. So we have a kind of a three-step vetting process. So yeah, um, that, that helped, has helped, um, you know, funnel them down to, to the ones that we need to get in front of. Yeah. So your, your feasibility phone call is your filter. Nice way of saying we're going to figure out if we want to work with you or not. Yes. And I, I told that from a, a, um, a remodeler many years ago. He's like, we have a feasibility phone call. We were in a networking group. It was like 20. I was like, I'm going to use, you know, that's a very nice way of saying uh, yeah, the vetting process. Yeah, exactly. All right. So you talk, we were just talking about leads. I want to end on this, your brand. Um, you know, I think, as we talk about, when you're a life cycle of construction company, you start out, you're just trying to make it work. You start hiring people, you start getting more consistent leads. And then you got to start thinking about your brand, right? How mm -hmm. you market, uh, what your brand is in, in the market. So uh, specifically to marketing, how do you guys market? Um, you know, you got to believe that you've got some, some trucks that are, that are, you know, have your sign on it and signs in the yard. Anything else you do outside of that, that maybe be a good tip for people out there? Yeah, you know, um, a handful of years ago, we, we did something that, um, I don't know if it's national, but uh, it was called Criss Cross. And, and when we would have a, a client in a neighborhood, I'd buy a mailing, now this is old school, but I'd buy a mail within a mile, and then we'd hammer that mailing list. Um, that, you know, that, that was, that was kind of old school. But, uh, you know, obviously our trucks say Deck South on them and things, and, and people see them, oh, we see your trucks everywhere. Yeah, must have a hundred of them. Like, no. You know, we got like six or something, you know, it's like, no, we don't. Uh, but it's nice that they, they see that. And, and that's happened over the years. Um, certainly word of mouth, um, you know, is big. I, I, I think that the old, the old adage of asking for a referral is mm. lost right now. And I mm. think that's, that's our most important form of advertising is trying to get in front of that client and go, you know, Mr. Smith, Mrs. Smith, are you really happy? You are. Um, do you mind if I, if I, is there any of your friends that you think I could give a phone call to and just, just let them know who I am? You know, um, can I get an email address? And, and, and the thing that I've, I've realized is there truly is a shelf life, um, you know, in all of this, right? I mean, you meet somebody, you, you, you plant a seed six years later, they call you and go, you know what, we've been waiting and now it's time to do something time to do something significant. It's like, wow, that's awesome, right? So sometimes I think we get tunnel vision and go, I, I need it now. But I think what, what I learned years ago was you can't overlook every single, every single thing you do, every touch, every conversation, every high five or virtual high five these days is, is planting of the seed, right? Yeah, everything matters, uh, definitely in marketing and sales. You know, there's another episode of The Building Code with Trunk Bay Construction out of Illinois. Uh, and they have a great process. They basically say from the beginning, um, I'm going to build you a great project. I'm going to ask you for a referral now. I'm going to make sure I remind you halfway through. And when it's done, I'm going to turn you around and say, look at this beautiful project. Now go tell everybody else. See, and they, they just set that tone early. And I, I don't think that's too much to ask. And I think to your point, John, I think it's a, it's a lost thing people do. I think that's, that's absolutely perfect because you're letting them know exactly what they can expect. And then you're following through with it. That's exactly. Yeah. yeah. All right, so you can find John at, uh, at Deck South on Instagram, right? Yes, sir. Okay, and so are, you get leads from your Instagram as well? Uh, we do. Just kind of round that out? Yeah, yeah. we do. Yeah. All right, well, go, go follow John, add to his followers. You can follow uh, me at the Paul Worth. 
Uh, right now, it's just photos of my kids, but more people follow me, I'll start throwing some more construction-related stuff up there. Well, That's my promise to you. You have two accounts sometimes, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's all over the place. Uh, oh, that's right. Yeah, I got, I got, uh, I got hacked the other day. That won't happen to you if you're my new follower. I promise you that. Good. All right. Well, I want to thank John again. Thanks for spending some time out here on Real Talk Real Pros. Uh, this is again every Wednesday. We're gonna have another pro like John on. We're gonna talk about the business, talk about the industry, give you tips and tricks. Uh, follow John at, at Deck South. Check out the uh, the podcast, the Building Code. Uh, anything related to Builder Trend, head out to our website. Uh, and we'll catch you here every Wednesday. This is going to be on our IGTV. Appreciate it. All right, John. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. Take care.